Hello my lovely nerds and welcome back for another video. This time in the science of world building we're going to be exploring how medicine can be used in your fantasy tales. This is particularly a favourite topic of mine so I hope you find it just as fascinating. I will be doing more videos on the subject in the future covering other topics like disease so watch out for those but for now Let's get cracking. Four key elements of medicine that you really need to consider when you're creating your worlds. How sickness is prevented, how sickness can be treated, how pain can be managed, and how injuries can be repaired. Obviously, if you've created a world where people don't feel pain, then you can probably skip one of those. But unless your society lacks one or more of those needs, then it's probably a good thing to think about how your culture relates to these aspects of medicine. So what ways are there for you to flavor this in your world? Well, first up, don't be afraid to let your characters be wrong in what their understanding of medicine is. You only need to look at our own history to understand just how wrong we got things, so it's very feasible for your characters also to misunderstand concepts about the body. Just think about the theory of the four humours, which arose in ancient Greece. That's where we believe that blood, phlegm, yellow and black bile needed to remain in balance in the body or you got sick. And this was a theory that continued all the way through to Shakespearean times and actually led to a lot of very wrong medical practices that just persisted over the years and didn't go anywhere. So if in our own civilization we have such an inability to accurately conduct medical practices, then you have a lot of license when it comes to your fantasy worlds. You can do the same, you could make it worse. Ask yourself, what medical theory do your people believe in and what implications does that theory have for how you are going to treat your individuals in society when they get sick or they get injured. What quacky medicine are you gonna throw at them and hope that it doesn't kill them? Another element of medicine that you really need to consider when designing your worlds is what are the attitudes towards medical professionals in the societies that you've created? History is rife with all sorts of evidence of medical practitioners doing wrong either deliberately in some cases or accidentally. We had scientists testing out bacteria that led to people dying from us testing that out on them. We even had competitions between surgeons trying to see who could hack a limb off the fastest. All of this together makes being a medical professional actually quite a knife edge of a profession. In some instances when you get it right, you're considered a savior. In instances where you get it wrong, such as you're the physician for the monarch? Well, there are quite a few instances where that profession ended up making the physician lose their life. And this is why it's important for you to consider how your citizens perceive your healers, medics, surgeons, whatever they are. Perhaps you have a culture where their understanding of medicine is so poor that actually a lot of people are very frightened to go into the medical profession because the individuals there are perceived as being more killers than healers because they get it wrong so much of the time. So when you're creating your medical theories, how are you going to go about creating limitations for them? Bonus points if you do this by incorporating it into other aspects of your world building, such as the prevalent status of religion in your society. Let's look at our own understanding of anatomy to explain this. Galen is basically considered the grandfather of everything anatomical. He was an ancient Greek who basically led to our understanding of most of what we've got going on here. But he didn't do dissections on humans. Well, it's thought he didn't. There's a little debate there. It's mainly thought that he did his dissections on animals, and this meant that his understanding of human anatomy was actually quite flawed, and he wasn't allowed to do autopsies on people. It was actually considered quite a vulgar thing to do, so he didn't do it. But that meant the knowledge didn't change. And over the years, there was a religious repression on the ability to do autopsies because it was considered to be desecrating the remains of the dead. And this meant that the theories that Galen had got wrong persisted over a long, long time. So this is something you could quite easily apply into your world. You have people who don't actually understand the inner ways of the body. And you can demonstrate this in the attitudes of your healers when they're talking about trying to fix the body and what their limitations are. And the religious oppression is just one way you could use to demonstrate this. Why not have other ideologies of the culture inserting themselves and making it impossible for people to perceive concepts beyond that? Things like evil spirits being the cause of diseases. So religion is just one of the ways that you can limit a culture's understanding of the human body. 
there are lots of other ways that you can do it too. What if you have a culture that is quite low on resources and has been low on resources for a long time? It could be quite a harsh climate and so everyone is putting all their efforts into just the day-to-day -day survival of gathering food and water and not enough people can be spared for the pursuit of an understanding of medicine. Other ways you can limit the understanding of the people in your world about how medicine works is by using the local environment that you put them in. There are lots of very common tropes in fantasy books like willow bark as a means of pain relief. I don't know if you know about it but willow bark actually contains uh, salicin which is the chemical component of aspirin. This is actually a representation of it. I got it from the Natural History Museum. I love Natural History Museum obviously. Aspirin is very useful when it comes to pain relief and that's why willow bark tea is such a common trope. We use it a lot in both our own history and in the stories that we now write about fantasy as a way of demonstrating pain relief. But if you have a society that lives in the desert that doesn't have great trade links with other societies, then they wouldn't have access to that willow bark. So then you can think about other alternatives that they would have in their local environment instead of willow bark. For example, do they use snake venom if they're in the desert? They could use it for pain relief, for fighting off diseases. There's lots of different properties of snake venom and you can explore it in all sorts of different ways in your stories to create a very cool microcosm culture. The next really limiting factor when it comes to your society's understanding of medicine is how warmongery has your society been over the years. War creates opportunity and need for healers, not just because there's lots of people with their arms hanging off or limbs bleeding everywhere and so you need to fix up those people, but also because there's lots of opportunities for surgeons to try something new. Oh, you've got another body that needs healing. Oh, well, I tried that last thing, it didn't work. I'm gonna try something new. So it creates this opportunity and need. Also a pressure from above. You often have generals and kings saying, quick, heal up the bodies. I need them for another fight. So the more people you heal, the better. Unless of course you have a culture where you're pulling in slaves from somewhere else to fight your wars and you actually don't care if they live or die because you've got plenty of other unwilling people you can drag in to fight your war for you. That's mean, but that would be a reason to explain why actually medicine would not have advanced very far in that culture, because there was no need for it. And it's not just for the treatment of injuries that wars are fantastic for. Generals also tend to care about the health of their soldiers. That's why trench foot was such a problem in First World War. That's why scurvy was such a problem for the Navy, because sailors weren't getting enough vitamin C. And an unhealthy army is less likely to be able to fight well in the battle. So generals do care about this. Now I'm talking about this, I'd love to see a story where you have the general battling with the army's medical expert who's running around trying to stuff oranges in people's faces. And, you know, I'd love to see magical ways of people trying to keep the members of the army healthy. I just think that would be really cool, but that's probably just me being nerdy. One final factor you should really consider when it comes to how good your society's medical knowledge will be is the ability of that society to share information. Is reading common in the society you've created? If not, if the vast majority of the population are unable to read and write, then you have the potential for a limitation on the ability to share medical advances. One really interesting way that you could see this play out is in terms of the knowledge that is known in small little societies around the world. So do you have a lot of very localised knowledge to one area that clashes a lot with the knowledge of another area because they've been developing this medical knowledge without much crossover. So they have their own quirks of belief, very like how religion develops in that sense. If, however, you have the ability to share knowledge across the world, no problem, then instead what you find is that you create a society where there is a lot more competition for who can find out the next discoveries. This is where I would love to see battles between magician scientists, races to publish based on the latest science knowledge that they've managed to discover and they want to get their names stamped on it. I'm just imagining these, you know, old Gandalf types being very proud about the fact that their name was on some paper about magic. But that is peak nerddom right there, and I'm not expecting many other people to climb to that summit with me. So I hope all of this shows you ways that you can incorporate a knowledge of medicine into the worlds that you've created. If you haven't already seen it, I recommend you go back and watch the History of Science video I did a few weeks ago, which has a lot more insight about how to match up the knowledge of the time with the scientific 
capabilities of the culture that you've created. If you did like this video, please like and subscribe. I'll obviously be back again next week with another about other aspects of how you can use science in your world building. So I hope you're looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to recording it. Please do get commenting below if you have any suggestions of topics you want me to cover. I'm working my way through a very long list that I have, but I'd love for you guys to feed in so I can make sure I'm exploring some areas that you find really interesting. All right then everybody, happy nerding, happy writing, and see you all again soon. Bye.